Before this video starts, I just want to let you guys know that my Patreon is linked down below in the description if you guys want to support me. For those of you who choose to support me, you guys can receive a certain amount of Discord.js coding files that I show within the series here that I code live within the Discord server each month. Your support is much appreciated, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the video. Hey, what is going on guys and girls? My name is Fusion Terry here. We're back again to another video, and in today's video, I'm showing you guys how to make buttons for your Discord bot in Discord SV12. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be going over specifically how to make these little buttons you guys can see on my screen here, where my bot framework has sent a specific message with a custom button allowing us to go ahead and click on this button and do certain things like access links you know um, change them from on and off and get certain values out of them and whatnot so there's a bunch of different things we can do with this and we'll go ahead and get into the video right now so we can start off by going into our bots folder on our desktop here opening our cmd.bat file and then going code space dot to open this up in visual studio code now, if this is your first episode in the series, I recommend you guys start from episode one so you guys don't miss out on any of the cool features we did here in the series, and you guys also shouldn't be missing any of the files or get any errors here with your code. So, we can go ahead here and start by going into our terminal, a new terminal, and we're going to have to go ahead and install this npm package. Now, because buttons aren't fully implemented into the Discord.js library at the time being, maybe they'll be implemented in version 13 or something, but for the time being, they're not implemented, they're currently within the Discord API. So it doesn't allow us to do anything currently within the library for buttons, but there has been some users on NPM who have went and made some packages for us that allows us to do exactly that. So link down in the description below, you guys can find the link to go to the NPM page for discord buttons. This is the NPM package we're going to be using in this video. It was just posted three days ago. I thought I'd take a little look at it as buttons with discord are fairly new, but uh, I've tested this out in my spare time and I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys how to use these buttons to do some pretty cool things. So. We're going to go ahead and install this by doing npm i discord dash buttons. Over in our terminal, we can go ahead and paste that and then hit enter. This should go ahead and install it for our bot here. And you'll know it's installed when it's finished here. And if you go into your package.json file, you guys should see discord dash buttons. And the current version we're using is 2.4.1 for the time being. So now that we have that done, we can go into our app.js file and we can go in here and go ahead and require. And we're just going to go ahead and require our discord.js buttons. And then we're going to have to pass in clients which is the variable we made for our Discord client right here. We're going to have to pass it in some parentheses right after. We can go up to file, save, and close out of this file now. Within our events folder, uh, since we have an event handler, we're going to need to make a new event. We're going to call it click button and dot JS, of course. And we're going to be going and copying our, whoops, uh, our ready events here, just because it's a lot smaller for us. And we'll paste it within our click button event here. And we'll just change this click button and get rid of this once line and we can go ahead and pass in button and uh, make sure this is also async right here now the reason why we've went ahead and made this make or sorry click button.js file is because with this package here when we go ahead and actually click on a button it's going to emit its own event that it's created so unlike the message event and ready event where it's already built into the discord library we have actually went ahead here and made our own click button event that's not actually in the library. So over on the NPM page here, we can go ahead and follow some of the examples here if you wanted to do creating buttons. Uh, it shows basically things like multiple buttons if you guys want to send multiple ones at once, uh, multiple buttons with an embed, and if you're using a command handler like we're doing here, he doesn't have to worry about any of this right now, but we can actually copy this line since uh, we won't have to write this out later if we copy it. And uh, we, yeah, we've already done all this, so you guys don't have to worry about too much, but we're going to go ahead and copy this example right here where we create a button. And we're going to go ahead and put this into a command. Before this video continues, I want to let you guys know that there's 87% of you guys watching these videos that aren't subscribed, and it would mean a lot to me if you guys could take two seconds of your time to hit subscribe with post notifications and drop a like on the video. Your support is much appreciated, so thank you guys so much for watching, and let's continue the video. So we'll come back to this click button event another time, because I'll show you guys why afterwards. But in our commands folder, we're going to go ahead and make an invite command um, that's going to allow us to send a little button with our bots that sends a button that when you click on it, it will bring you to the page to invite the bot to your Discord server. Something pretty simple and pretty cool we can do at the same time here. So we can go ahead and paste that in here, but um, we're going to need our ping command so that we can actually have it properly formatted in our file and whatnot um, so the command works. So we can paste our ping command here. We'll change this to invites. I'm not going to change the description because I am specifically lazy and for that reason. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to go ahead and copy what we got here from the documentation and we can paste it right in here. Once again, I don't think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but documentation for uh, Discord dash buttons are going to be linked in the description below. 
Now we're actually gonna go ahead and require this uh, by doing message button. And we don't actually require a variable, so we can just do const and then open this up. And I told you guys we weren't gonna write this earlier, but we copied something else, so uh, we kind of have to write this out. But Discord dash buttons now, we're gonna require this. And then we should be good to go and use this button here. So now that we've done that and we have our message button required, what we can do now is change up a few things. So with the buttons themselves, there's three different styles of buttons. There's red, sorry, there's four different styles of buttons, I should say. Red being the background of the buttons red. There's green when it's green. And then there's a URL, meaning you can click on it. So I showed you guys that earlier in the Discord server. You could click on that little gray button. And then you, there's also a blurple, which is like a bluish purple, which is like the color of the, the bot tags in Discord. You know, like lightish blue. I'll show you guys after anyways. But uh, there's four different things you guys can do with these buttons. So the style is basically the color. Uh, the label, when you set a label, it's kind of like a message embed, the way their properties work. You set a label, it's like the title. So your label in this case would be my first button and on the button it would literally say my first button. So in this case, uh, we'll change this to green just for some testing purposes. And we'll just make this say green uh, button. And then uh, what we can do now is set an ID. So setting an ID is like basically setting a function name to check for. So in this case, we're setting the ID as the string click underscore to underscore function. So if we were to copy this right here, in our check button event, if we were to do if button the ID is equal to, and then we were to pass this in a string right here, we could make this do something very specific only for when this button is clicked. If this were to be changed to click to without the function, this wouldn't run because the string's different. You know what I mean? So in this case, what we can do is do button, I believe it's button.channel.send. Uh, I don't want to get this wrong here, but it's button.channel.send and then we'll just say button uh, works. Just hope this works here and then end that with a semicolon right there. So we can go up to file, save, and close out of this event here. And for this green button now, we can get rid of this dot set disabled property. Basically, this is allowing it so it's disabled instantly. So the second the button spawns in on Discord, it's automatically gonna be unclickable, meaning nobody can click on it. It's basically grayed out. So then what we're doing here to send a specific button, just being one, we're doing message.channel.send and we're sending a specific message and then we're putting a comma to separate it. And after that comma, we're putting our button that we want and created right here. So what we can do is I will make uh, two other kinds of buttons at the same time, just to show you guys the, or sorry, three other kinds of buttons, just to show you guys the possibilities with buttons. Uh, so we can paste that one, that one, and that one. So we'll have buttons of one, two, uh, zero, one, two, three, I guess. And we can go ahead and send them all individually as well. But since there's four different types of styles, I thought I would go ahead and show you guys all the different types of styles we can do here within uh, this NPM package. So we can copy this message channel that's sent, and I'm just going to send it a few more times. We could use that. A method within the docs where we send multiple but uh, I'm not gonna bother going back and looking at it so in this case it's gonna send all of these buttons here and uh, I want them to be a bit different so I want my second button to be red and I'm gonna change this to red button and instead of click to function we could have this as click to um, not underscore function and then you could have this do something else when it's clicked so let's say when the green buttons clicked I want it to say um, button works, but then if we do else if uh, button the ID is equal to, and then we were to open this up here, whoops, uh, open this up right here and pass that in, then we can go ahead and do button, whoops, not that long string right there, button dot channel uh, dot send, and then we can go ahead and add in right here, say uh, red, whoops, red, button works there so we can end that with the semicolon as well this is just showing you guys once again what you guys can do a little bit here with uh, different buttons 
And I'm gonna save this and uh, we're gonna close it to this file. And then for our next button here, we'll do the default, which is Blurple. So we'll actually just pass in Blurple uh, so we don't remove it here. So we can go ahead and pass that in and then we can just say that the Blurple button works and we'll pass in the same function or we you know what, we'll just change it to a different function. Uh, we'll just name it clicked. And then we can also have a URL scheme button. Now, when you have a style that's a URL, you actually have to do a dot set uh, URL to actually go ahead and send a specific URL. So in this case, our URL is gonna be this one since we just have it on hand right here. And we can paste that. And our label is gonna be URL button. And uh, our function will just be the same as the first, uh, yeah, the first one. So it does the same thing when it gets clicked. So now that we have that done, and it's gonna send all of those buttons, we can go up to file, save all, go up to terminal, new terminal, and then we can do node app.js. And then when we hit enter here, this is gonna go ahead and create, or sorry, logger bought into Discord and connect to the database. Over within the Discord server here, if I were to do the invite command, as uh, we made it there, this is gonna go ahead and send, whoops, it's gonna go ahead and send a few different buttons here to the channel as we've made about uh, three or four of them. So the first one we made was the green button right here and the message links, just what we had as our message. But if I click on this green button, it's gonna say button works. And then it's also gonna say this interaction failed because we didn't do something proper as well. Um, but there's the red button here, which is next. And if we were to click on that, it's gonna say red button works. And then there's also the blurple button, which is like this bot identifier tag color, if you know what I mean. And if we were to click on that, it would go ahead and it wouldn't do anything because we put a different event uh, for this clicked button. And then the same goes for when we click this, it would bring us to this link like we wanted it to. If you guys enjoyed this video on how to make buttons for your Discord bot in Discord HSV12, slap the like button in this video, hit subscribe with post notifications so you guys never miss an upload in the series. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.